Hi guys, welcome to my kitchen and welcome to Ignite. Let's go straight to the scoreboard. Charlotte, you have hit the half century mark. You are up to 50 points. Well done. You have been doing so well in the games on a Wednesday and with all of the WhatsApp sentences and lots of ideas coming from you. Fantastic. Nathan, you're not far behind. Um, Joshua and Andrew, there is plenty of chance still to catch up. No worries. And if you haven't got your name on the scoreboard yet, you still can. There are going to be prizes available when we eventually get back in the den. Um, one of the ways you can get some points up there is to let me know what the crazy facts have been in our Bible reading group. So where I've been hiding them in the Bible verses. The clue for this week's fact is blue whales. OK, something to do with blue whales. So you can text me that one. But if you can go back and find more and look back through the weeks, find some other facts, let me know. Great. That will get you a few points up there. Um, when we met on Wednesday on Jitsi, we had a great time. We had a really crazy game this week. It was great fun. Um, but also we had loads and loads of ideas from you guys. So let's get straight into them. Some ideas for things to be doing if you are getting a little bit bored now after all this time off school. Could you imagine, huh? So the first one's a really good one. Um, there is a guy who um, has been learning how to mend his bike. So the bike's got used quite a lot during lockdown and it needs some repairs. And what a great skill to learn. But is there something at home that you can mend or overhaul or service? Some skills that you could learn in repairing something. Fantastic thing to do. Um, the next idea is because uh, one entire family has been cleaning out their house this week. Also a great idea. Is there something that you could clear out? Could you clear out your bedroom? Could you just clear out a cupboard in your bedroom? Maybe if you ask your mum, she would love some help clearing out a cupboard in her kitchen. Go for it. Great fun clearing things out. <clears throat> Another idea that came up is looking at old photos. This is something that we did actually as a family back when the weather was rubbish at the end of March, um, beginning of April on a really rainy weekend. We got out a suitcase of photos that my dad had given me and we went through those and organised them all. And it was really good fun to look back like 20, 30, 40 years more even at his old photos. So if you've got some old family photos, why not spend some time having a look at them? Maybe as a family, it would be a really good idea. The last idea is not a new one, but so you could watch something online with a friend. The but is that there is loads of new stuff out there now. You can watch a football match. The cricket started or you could watch something on YouTube and why not learn something together? You could do some art, you could do some craft, you could learn something else and see what you come up with at the end. I'd love to see what you created. So let me know how you've been getting on. I would love to hear it. Um, the other ideas are for helping other people, which, you know, is our random act of kindness throughout all of this time. Um, this idea is a great one first up and it came from you, not from me, but it is be nice to and help your parents. Fantastic idea, I think. And the second one is to visit elderly relatives who have been isolating and shielding. Um, maybe you're in a bubble with them. Maybe you're not. Maybe you'll need to stay socially distanced from them. Keep all the regulations, whatever they are and how they apply in your situation. Um, but for these guys who have been on their own for a long time now, keeping visiting them regularly is just a really good idea just to spend some time and to talk. Maybe even send them some messages and stuff as well. OK, that's me done for here. I'm going to go and sit somewhere else a bit more comfy in my house and I'll see you in a few seconds. Hi guys. Oh, the weather has been so miserable this week. I thought I would come and sit back in front of this really cheery wallpaper, cheer us all up a bit. So it was great when we met on Wednesday. And um, as we were talking about Jonah a bit, God started to talk to me about what we were going to chat about today, um, which is really cool. So uh, if you remember, or if you weren't there, um, we were just looking at the bit in the story of Jonah where the sailors were getting ready to throw Jonah out of the boat. And uh, right before that, they, they come down to him and he's sleeping and they say, you need to pray to your God. Who is your God? And he has to answer them. And that just got me thinking a little bit. If somebody asks us, who is our God? What are we going to say? Could you answer that? Most of the world 
doesn't recognize our God. It's a real shame, but they don't. Um, quite a lot of people are really quick to blame him for every disaster that comes along. But we know that he hasn't caused the disasters. He's the one who will help us find our way through them. But they don't know that. So what can we say if your friend or your grandma or somebody later in your life says, well, who is this God that you go to church for, that you worship, that you have this relationship with? What can we say? Well, I'm going to give you some of my thoughts. Obviously, our relationship with God is really personal. So these are my thoughts. Um, but there's plenty that you can do. You can have a think about this um, and you can go and look some stuff up as well. I'm going to use some of God's names. There are so many of God's names that are in the Bible. You can go and look them up. Find some that really um, that, that really appeal to you, that are, that are really where you're at. And, and that's who God is to you. Um, also, I was listening to Bethel's version of Waymaker and God was just speaking the same thing again to me with that. In the chorus, they repeat over and they, they, they say quite a lot about who God is. And so I'm just going to use some of those terms as well. And that is my worship song for you this week. Um, Waymaker is such an amazing song. I do particularly like Bethel's version. But do you know what my challenge is? Go and find others. Go find one that you like, because there will be one. There are so many versions. Go look it up. Such an amazing song. So when I think of God, the first thing I think of is um, when it says quite a lot in Genesis, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. In other words, the same God in each generation. The God of Jacob was the same God that had been the God of Isaac, the same God that was the God of Abraham. He hadn't changed. He's God of yesterday, today and tomorrow. When Moses asked God, who are you? Who can I tell the people that you are? Well, you're sending me to lead them and to lead them out of Egypt. But, but who am I going to tell you? Tell them that you are. And God said, I am doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes does it? it doesn't make a lot of sense when you first hear what's that all about but what he's saying is I am the God who is here today who is now and will always be it covers absolutely everything that he is everything that I'm going to talk about today you're going to hear some more I am statements because they're all over the bible but it covers all the stuff that I can't talk about because I haven't got time to Psalm 90 verse 2 says before the mountains were born or before you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Same God. He doesn't change. Here's another word that we can call God. Abba. I'm not talking about the 70s pop band or the Mamma Mia stuff. I'm talking Abba. In Romans 8.15 it says the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. So what does that word Abba mean? The closest we can get to it in English is the word Daddy. So it's, it's a fond name, a sort of slang name, a name that you can call your dad when you're a young child, he's your daddy. He's the one who loves you so, so much. The one who'll do anything for you and who will protect you. But I don't know about you, but for me, I, I never I never quite got it. I guess I heard that as an adult. It didn't, it didn't quite click with me. But now for you NCIS fans, this is when it clicked for me. There is a scene in NCIS where Ziva, who is the um, Israeli agent, um, her father has been shot and she runs into the room and she looks across the room and her father is slumped down. And as she runs across to be with him, she screams Abba. And when I saw that, I was just like, oh, my gosh, that's what Abba means. She just loved him so, so much. Everything they'd been through and it had not all been good. It had not, but that didn't matter. He was still Abba to her. And that is our God to us. He is Abba, all loving, almighty God. God is our comforter. 
this is something I think about a lot and I pray a lot and I talk to God about. He's our comforter. He's there when no one else is around for you. Um, for me, there were a lot of nights when my kids were young and I put them to bed and I'd had people around me all day long and I chatted to them and they were there for me then. But in those evenings, there was me and there was God. He was still there for me when nobody else was. You might feel that nobody is there for you when um, suddenly you've made a decision in your life. Things have changed. You feel like your friends have walked away. Maybe they don't agree with you. Whatever's happened in your life, wherever you're at, God is still there for you. When you leave home, maybe when you go to uni, you might think you're alone, but you're not. He is your comforter and he is still there for you. In Isaiah 51, 12, God says it's one of these I am's. I, yes, I am the one who comforts you. Can't be any clearer. He's there for you. So, like I said, God has a lot of names and it's good to know them because those names describe exactly who he is. It explains who he is. Psalm 9 verse 10 says, those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. So it's a good thing to know God's name. And let's start with Elohim. Elohim is a great place to start. Elohim means God supreme, God almighty. What more is there to say? He is God of the whole universe and yet he's still our Abba. Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. Wow, this is one I have seen God move in my life so many times, God our provider. And I think the first time it comes up in the Bible is in Genesis 22 with Abraham and Isaac. So I don't know how many of you remember, um, a while back we were doing the story of Abraham and Isaac where Abraham is about to sacrifice Isaac and he takes him up to the mountain he even gets him to carry the wood on the way up and if you remember I can't even remember who was acting it out for us but we had somebody on the pool table ready to be sacrificed and just at that moment when Abraham is there obediently following God's command and he picks up the knife ready to sacrifice his only son who he'd waited for for so long he looks up and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns and he went over and he took the ram and he sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide, Jehovah Jireh. That was provision that God had provided, wasn't it? That ram was right there. And, you know, when God provides for us, sometimes it is right in the moment. I have had envelopes through the door when I just needed some money. It's been right there. On other times, you know, you, you, you get to a point where you need something desperately and you look and you realise that, of course, God knew ahead of time, like with that ram for Abraham. He knew ahead of time. He had that ready. That wasn't a, a, a sort of a momentary. Oh, my gosh, I better provide something now. It was like, that was God's plan. He was prepared. He'd provided. And in our lives, that happens, too. There have been um, there was one time when um, my car was um, just breaking down all the time. And um, right in that time when my car broke down a couple of times in a few months, um, I just received a small amount of money from somebody and I had that in my savings and it paid for all of those repairs. It was absolutely fantastic. God had provided. And I was just like, wow, God, you knew you were there ahead of time. Other times it can be a person. It can be someone that God has put into your life. And just at the right moment, they are there for you to go to them for whatever you need. But those people are there because God's put them there. He's provided. Awesome. Awesome God. The next one is Jehovah Shalom. God is our peace. We know this, don't we? We've talked about it a lot. In John 16, 33, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. We know things aren't easy for us all the time. Things have been really difficult with this COVID-19 situation. But we can have God's peace, that peace, that shalom peace, that Irene peace that covers everything, health, wealth, well-being, everything that we need. God has got for us in that word shalom, in that word peace, as well as, of course, having that peace in our hearts. Um, I'm not sure how to say this one, but El Roy, maybe God who sees you. 
he's always with you. He doesn't take his eyes off of you. He's never going to miss something for a second. You're not going to fall over and he's going to miss it. He sees you in good times. He sees you in bad times. He sees you when you're having troubles. He's always there. Here's another one, El Cana. This means a jealous God. Our God is a jealous God. Well, let's start at the beginning. El means might, strength and power. He is an almighty and all powerful God. And this almighty, all powerful God is jealous for you. He loves you so much. He wants relationship with you. That's how much he feels for you. He is jealous for you. He wants you as his friend. Now, let's spend a few minutes just thinking about that Waymaker song. Um, there are four things that keep coming up in the chorus. There's Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper and Light in the Darkness. Those are all descriptions of our God, all things that he does for us. So let's start with Waymaker. Waymaker just means he makes a path for us. And it reminds me of the Good Shepherd. And Jesus said in John 10, 14, I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And of course, um, Psalm 23 that we looked at when we did August the other year, when we looked at in combustion, we um, looked a lot at Psalm 23 and how God is our Good Shepherd. He leads us the way we should go. We've talked a lot about the path that God has for us and he leads us on it. He takes us where we'll be safe and he looks after us and he gives us all that we need. And we know, too, that if we go astray from that path, he will help us find our way back to it. What an amazing God we have. What about miracle worker? Well, gosh, we know all the miracles that Jesus did when he was here on Earth. But. If we're talking to somebody else and we're telling someone else who our God is, maybe we want to talk about some of the miracles that we've seen in our own lives. Um, I was thinking of an example when I was quite a new Christian. Do you know, you don't have to pray some massive elaborate prayer. We've been reading um, recently in Acts about the, the, the guy who had been crippled from birth and John and Peter prayed for him. Peter didn't say anything elaborate. He just prayed in Jesus name that the guy would be healed and he was completely healed. Well, when I was quite a new Christian, literally only a couple of weeks saved, um, I was um, in uni digs and I was cooking my tea in the kitchen, which was right next door to my bedroom. And I'd gotten a really, really bad backache and I'd never had backache before. And I didn't know what was going on. And I think it had come from an aerobics class, but I wasn't sure I was like, what on earth am I going to do? got to the point where the pasta was cooking and I just had to go back into my bedroom and just sit down for a minute and I thought hang on a second I know God heals I can just pray well I didn't really know what to say I was literally like God I know you can heal and I've got this really bad backache and I just trust you to heal it something really really simple like that and then I just went back to the kitchen because otherwise things would have burned and I was there a few minutes dealing with my tea and then I had to reach down for a plate and our plates were all in the bottom cupboards. And I just reached down and as I reached for my plate, I was like, oh, my gosh, my back's healed. And I never had a pain again. And it was absolutely incredible, an amazing miracle. But what miracles do you have to tell that our God has done for you? What an amazing God we have. Promise keeper. You know that God never fails to keep his promises. Um, the stuff we've talked about today, the stuff we've talked about in the past, all the amazing promises that God makes for us in the Bible. We can trust him to keep his promises. It was one of the last things that Joshua told the people. He led them into the promised land. And as he was speaking to them for the last time, one of the things he reminded them was this. You know, with all your heart and soul, that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. God is our promise keeper. He will not fail. And then the last one, the light in the darkness. Jesus says in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You know, if, you, if you're saved, you're following Jesus and God is there for you. He is our God, Ignite. And there is so much that you can tell about him, so much more than I've said here. But what's your story with God? What's your story 
How would you explain it if somebody asked? I have one last thing to read to you. Um, one of my favourite bits of the Bible is 1 Corinthians 13. And if you replace the word love in those verses with the word God, because God is love, you um, come up with another description, another whole um, description about who God is. So I'm just going to read that to you now. God is patient. God is kind. God does not envy and does not boast. God is not proud. He does not dishonour others. He is not self-seeking. God is not easily angered. He keeps no record of wrongs. God does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. God always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. God never fails. Well, hopefully that has given you a few ideas of who our God is, but I'm sure you have got many more of your own. And this week, why don't you go away and think about how you would answer that question? Who is your God? See you next week, guys. Bye.